Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about in Article 230 is 230.85, Emergency Disconnect. Now, <laughs> this is this is a funny one. It just depends on what part of the country you're in. Uh, I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. When I talk to people local about this change, it's like a two-second conversation. Everybody's like, who cares? We've been doing it that way for 50 years anyway. Uh, I was in Georgia a couple of weeks ago. They said the same thing. They're like, who cares? We already do that. I was in Virginia a week before that, and they lost their minds. They're like, oh, my God, emergency. Dead. What are you talking about? So it just depends on what part of the country you're in. 230.85, emergency disconnect. The rules for dwelling unit emergency disconnects were expanded and clarified. And I also want to point out that we made a similar change, a, a new section in Article 225, 225.41, for dwellings that are supplied by a feeder circuit. Let me clarify the, the feeder circuit thing first, okay? Maybe I've got a house that's out in kind of a rural area. I, I see this a lot, where you've got the house that's maybe, I don't know, two, three hundred feet away from the from the road. The utility, a lot of times, will want to have the meter and service disconnect out by the street. And then you pull wires out to the house. Now, the utility often will want that because the utility, if you're signing up for 122 40 volt service, they have to actually give you 122 40, right? They can't have so much voltage drop that it's like 108 slash 216. Okay, so they're going to tell you listen, at the meter, you'll get 122.40. <laughs> Not our fault if you want to build your house 300 feet away from the meter. right? So that's kind of a clever little thing that they do. And, and I get it. I totally understand. So you've got the rules for emergency disconnects, but it applied in Article 230 for services. So what if your house isn't supplied by a service? What if it's supplied by a feeder? Because if you put the service disconnect out by the road, that's the end of the service. Downstream of that, feeding your house, is a feeder circuit. And we didn't really talk about that in the 2020 code. So now we do. That's in 225.41. You can go read that. It's going to say the exact same stuff that 230.85 says here in this section. All right, let's go ahead. An emergency disconnect is required for all one and two family dwellings. Okay, this is an emergency disconnect. This is not necessarily the service disconnect. I mentioned in the previous video, we have always, and I mean that literally, we have always said in the NEC that you have to have a service disconnect located either outside or immediately where the service conductors enter the building, right at the point of entrance. That's been in the code since 1897. This rule is not talking about that. This rule is saying, listen, we want to give the firefighters a way to shut off the building on the outside of the building. All right, so the house is on fire, the firefighters show up, they have enough to worry about, all right? They don't also need to be concerned about whether or not there's electricity supplying this house that they're throwing water on. So we want to give them a way that they can shut it off from the outside. Now, historically, firefighters, a lot of firefighters, have been trained to pull that meter out while it's under load. And that's a pretty significant hazard. It's an electric shock hazard and it's a potential arc flash hazard, depending on the available fault current and, you know, the size of the transformer and everything else. But here's the thing, man. Pulling out a meter under load is a dangerous practice. And the firefighters have enough to concern themselves with. Let's give them a way to shut off power to the house. Okay, so emergency disconnect required for all one and two family dwellings. This is a two family dwelling. There's two meters. And if you squint your eyes, there's two disconnects. <laughs> Did a pretty nice job of camouflaging them. And that's why I took this picture. I thought, man, that's, that's a good looking paint job. But uh, there you go. So there's your two emergency disconnects. 230.85A1, the location. The disconnect can be, or I'm sorry, must be in a readily accessible location uh, or within sight, a uh, readily accessible outdoor location or within sight of the dwelling. All right, so this emergency disconnect could be right there. I walk up to it, I shut it down, and we're good to go, right? So that's the emergency disconnect. The rating, short circuit current rating must be not less than the available fault current. That's always the case. That's covered in 110.10. We, we don't really even need this section because that, that's already a requirement. That's not an option anyway. Grouping. If more than one disconnect is installed, they must be grouped. All right, so over here on the left, is that a meter? I think it is. Yes, I can see the jaws there. That's a meter. 
and then here in the center we got a transfer switch and over here on the right we've got a panel board uh, this complies this could be two emergency disconnects they are both grouped and we're good to go we shut this one off we shut that one off power to the house is interrupted and we're good right so that would comply the emergency disconnect must be one of the following item one a service disconnect now listen this is obviously the easiest way to satisfy this rule and for new construction look in new construction give me a break this is the way we need to be doing it all right so you got your overhead service drop service conductors coming down they hit the meter open that thing up you got a two pull 200 shut it off done deal there's your emergency disconnect now some people get all concerned when they see this and are freaking out saying oh man what what about if 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 a burglar comes by and wants to just trip shut off the thing well a burglar could come by and pull the meter right I mean, they could just as easily do that so it, but hey if, if you're worried about it put a lock on it you can put a padlock on these things they all everyone that i've seen and i've seen hundreds uh they because like i said in utah we've, we've always done this you you can put a lock on that thing well, what if the burglar has bolt cutters? If the burglar has bolt cutters, then they're going to pull the meter, right? So, oh, and by the way, well, what if you lock it? Then the fire department can't use it. Well, the fire department has bolt cutters too. So, yeah, put a lock on it. it it's fine. And, and honestly, you know, the, the older I get and the, the more experience I get, I, I, I started to realize that, you know, a lot of times it, it's not burglars and terrorists and things that we have to worry about. It's bored teenagers, right? I mean, I, I'm just thinking like, I never did this when I was younger, surprisingly, but I could see kids three o'clock walking home from junior high and just walking through the neighborhood and <laughs> shutting off breakers. I could totally see that happening. Uh, I never had a problem with it. Nobody I know here in Utah has ever really had a problem with it. But look, if you're concerned about it, put a lock on it. Nothing wrong with that. So there you go. Can be a service disconnect. Item two, this was clarified and they did a very good job on this you can use a meter disconnect. Now, stop for a minute. When I say a meter disconnect, boy, did I find out. That means different things to different people. And the code making panel uh, had to really address this too because a meter disconnect, if you, for most people, a meter disconnect is a disconnect upstream of the meter in a totally separate enclosure. Okay, well, they clarify it. Look, if you wanna use a meter disconnect as your emergency disconnect, fine but it has to be integral to the meter mounting equipment and it must not be marked suitable only as service equipment all right so here's the thing what i'm showing here in the photograph is not a meter disconnect it's a meter bypass which does the exact opposite of what we're trying to do a meter bypass is for the utility so the utility can use the bypass keep power on and pull out the meter without disrupting the customer. That's the opposite of what we're trying to do, right? So a meter disconnect has to be part of the meter mounting equipment, okay? And you can shut it off and it actually shuts off power to the house, okay? Because that's what we're trying to do. So item two, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I've never seen an actual meter disconnect that's part of the meter socket enclosure. So there you go. Option two, it's there. I don't know that you're really gonna use it. Option three, okay, the first time you read this, your head just explodes, or at least mine did. If you don't wanna use a service disconnect and you're not gonna use a meter disconnect, you could use option three, other listed disconnect switches or circuit breakers on the supply side of the service disconnect that are suitable for use as service equipment and not marked suitable only for use as service equipment, okay. I can, I can see it in your face. You're like, okay, wait a minute, stupid. <laughs> the service disconnect is the first place you can shut off the service, right? That's what Article 100 says? Yeah. Well, if I have a disconnect and I put it upstream of the service disconnect, then it is the service disconnect because the service disconnect is the first switch. You just told me to put a, a switch upstream of the first switch, which makes that switch the first switch, which means it is the service. Look, I know. I totally get it. But this says, hey man, put a sticker on it that says it's not the service disconnect. I know it looks and smells and tastes just like a service disconnect, but the sticker says it's not one, so it's not. Okay, I know. Here's the deal. 
this is actually a really important allowance because think about it. If you have an existing building, okay, if you have an existing building and all it has on the outside is just a meter, what happens when you do the service change? What happens when you do the service change and you rip all that apart and you put in new equipment? Well, if you put in a new meter and a switch outside and that's the service disconnect, that's your service disconnect now, right? So how many wires do you need between the service disconnect and the panel board inside? Four, right? Where does your grounding electrode system terminate to? The service disconnect. Okay, well, hang on here. I went from doing a service change to suddenly having to remodel a house. And maybe it, it ain't in the cards to replace that three-wire cable with a four-wire cable for whatever reason. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to do a real service change, really significantly increase safety to everybody, not just the firefighters, but, but to the occupant by using modern equipment. It allows me to do all of that without having to remove the three-wire cable and change it to a four without having to relocate the connections to the grounding electrode system, right? We're going to put a little sticker on this and we're going to kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink and say, listen, I know it looks like a service disconnect because it kind of is, right? But <laughs> we're going to put a sticker on it that says it's not. That way I don't have to rip out the three wire cable. I can leave it there. I can leave the grounding electrode system where it is and we increase safety and we don't have to rip the building apart, okay? Look, for new construction, I'm not telling you what to do, all right? However you choose to comply with the code, that's your, that's up to you. But look, for new construction, just put a service disconnect on the outside and you're done, okay? If you want to go through item three and really play that mental gymnastics, you're a better person than me. I'm not going to go through all that. I'm putting the service disconnect on the outside of the house, running four wires into the panel, grounding electrode system, terminates on the outside, done, okay? So if you do this, then you got to use a sticker that says not service equipment. The, the equipment itself has to be rated as a service disconnect, because it is. And, but it must not be rated only as a service disconnect. And what that means is factory bonded neutral to ground. All right, so we keep on reading 230.85C replacement. This section must be satisfied if the service equipment gets replaced. So if I'm doing a service change, then yeah, you got to comply. There is an exception that says this section does not apply if a meter socket enclosure or service conductors or raceways and fittings are the only items being replaced. Well, guess what? None of that is service equipment anyway. The service equipment does not include the meter, right? So that's in 230.60. So if all you're doing is changing this enclosure out, you can remove and replace it with the same stuff and you're in the clear okay so don't don't freak out and think you got to do more than you have to do this section also has some really nice language for signage if the disconnects for other energy sources are not near the emergency disconnect then signage must be provided to indicate their locations listen there is no reason to do all of this stuff if the firefighter walks up to it turns off the breaker and here's a generator fire up and has no idea where the generator is or how to shut it off. What's the point, right? So if you have a generator or other energy, uh, you know, energy sources, energy management, or uh, energy storage system, solar PV, any of that stuff, we need to tell people how to shut off the building. So this one, great example. 48 kW gas generator is located outside of this building for on-site optional standby power source. Perfect, there you go. So got some good signage. Uh, we really go into the weeds and tell you what kind of signage we have to have. The emergency disconnect must be one of these markings as appropriate for item one, two, or three. So you're going to have a sticker that says emergency disconnect, service disconnect. That's probably the sticker we're going to use for new construction. Or you could use the meter dis disconnect one. Or you could do option three, which again, in my opinion, should, be, should only be used in existing scenarios. Emergency disconnect, not service equipment. The markings must comply with 110.21b, which means not handwritten, permanently affixed, capable of withstanding the environment they're involved in, and be on the outside front of the enclosure with white letters on a red background, and the letters have to be at least a half inch high. 
What a big section, man, 230.85, emergency disconnect. So there you go. All you wanted to know about emergency disconnects for dwellings, but we're afraid to ask. All right, we're done with Article 230. We're going to jump over into what could be my favorite article of the code, Article 240, Overcurrent Protection. See you there.